Storage arrays do a lot of things well, and at the crux of what they do well is the concept of pooling. Pooling allows the aggregation of capacity and performance, as well as the reduction of management overhead. On the capacity front, storage arrays avoid capacity islands, where one server might have loads of free storage capacity and doesn't need it, whereas another server is in desperate need for more storage but doesn't have any. In a traditional direct attached storage approach, where each physical server has only the storage capacity that is physically installed within the physical chassis of that server, sharing of free capacity is not viable. We show this in the slide. Server A on the left hand side has got one terabyte of direct attached storage. And by the way, we shorten the term direct attached storage to DAS, D-A-S. Now then, back to server A. Although it's got one terabyte of direct attached storage, it's only actually using 73 gig of that. Whereas server B on the right hand side, it's also got a terabyte of DAS storage. But this time server B is using 979 gigabytes and it would dearly love some of that spare capacity that server A has. In traditional DAS approaches, this sharing of capacity is not viable and we end up with what we call capacity islands or situations where free capacity that could be used elsewhere is stranded and effectively wasted. As we can see, Server A has got 927 gigabytes of storage that it's not using, but that it can't share with Server B. Storage arrays come to the rescue here. They take persistent storage capacity away from the server-centric model, and they pull it together inside the storage array, as we show in the updated diagram. This time, and this is a real simple example, okay, but our two terabyte of storage is in our storage array, and our two hosts access storage from the array. This time, we can reclaim unused space from server A and reallocate it to server B, which desperately needs it. And bingo, we have much more efficient utilization of our capacity. It's pretty much the same for performance, too. Each driver's got a maximum number of IOPS, or megabytes a second, that it can sustain. Let's look again at our DAS model, where server A has four drives and server B has four drives. To keep it simple, we'll just talk about IOPS, input-output operations per second, and we'll also assume that each drive is capable of performing 200 IOPS. Now, server B is pushing its four locally attached drives to the performance limit. It's squeezing every last IOP out of them. Server A, on the other hand, is sitting around most of the day, not doing a great deal, and it's barely touching the sides of its 800 IOPS that its four DAS drives can provide. Again, with the DAS approach, where storage resources are locked to the server they're physically installed in, these spare IOPS in the four drives in Server A can't be dynamically shared with Server B. Now, let's switch again to our storage array approach. In exactly the same way that capacity was pooled, if we move those eight drives out of the two servers and into our storage array, the IOPS capability of the drives is also pooled and available to both servers. As we can see from our diagram, each server has a one terabyte drive that is striped across all eight physical drives. This means that each of the two logical volumes, one assigned to server A and the other assigned to server B, has access to the potential 1600 IOPS of the combined eight drives. And as we can see, Server B is now able to utilize over a thousand IOPS. Now there are more IOPS available from the eight pool drives, but we're assuming this time that Server B's application isn't busy enough to demand them all. Now it should be fairly obvious that this can be pretty significant when we do it at scale, when we have hundreds of drives pulled together rather than a measly eight. One drive, as we show in the diagram now, is equal to 200 IOPS. Now then, let's go and pull 128 of them. And this is still a modest number for some large storage arrays that have thousands of drives. But even in our example, we suddenly have over 25,000 IOPS to play with. Now, while we're on this topic, let's introduce the concept of the noisy neighbor. A noisy neighbor is a system that utilizes a shared resource, such as a storage array, but monopolizes all of the resources and starves other systems. For example, in our little two host SAN with eight drives, if server B absolutely hammered all of the IOPS out of all eight drives all of the time, server A would definitely see a performance impact. 
and if server A and server B both pushed the storage array as hard as they could, the contention would result in both servers impacting each other. So you do need to be careful how you go about this. But in saying that, for most use cases, the pooling provided by storage arrays enables better capacity utilization and better performance, and all in all, better utilization of our assets. And while we have our mini two server SAN still at the front of our minds, we should be able to see how pooling and centralizing of resources can potentially make storage management simpler. Again, imagine we've got hundreds or maybe thousands of SAN attached servers and that's common. It'll be so much simpler to manage just a handful of storage arrays than it would be to individually manage the storage requirements of a thousand plus servers. So now that we can see some of the benefits of storage arrays, let's look at how they're built and what they look like under the hood.